In this video, I get to do something very special. I get a sit down in person interview with the inventor of the Gip Grip and my father, Jerry Gibbons. So without any further delay, here's the full length interview with the inventor of the Gip Grip, Jerry Gibbons. When did you get the, well, first of all, what is your idea? Well, my idea is the angular hockey stick handle that's removably ap applicable. Uh, I got this idea in 19, uh, early 80s, and I uh, was not a big proponent of everybody using a, a big stick, a long stick. Everybody uses a long stick because that's the perfect stick, the, the hockey stick that players can use uh, to take a good slap shot. But 99% of the time that you're on the ice, and using your stick, stick handling, passing, receiving passes, you're not taking a slap shot. So I just decided um, that I was going to see what it was like to play with a shorter stick. And basically I did a lot of experimentation with, the, with my own game and I came up with this, with this idea. The experiments, in my opinion, work great for me um, and they'll work for anybody who isn't tied to uh, taking the greatest slap shot uh, with a long, long stick. And when did you dis get the idea of, you know, you have the shorter stick, but now putting an angle on it? When did that idea come? Well, sometimes when I would take the, the slap shot in my, in my experimenting with the smaller, with, with a, a shorter stick, my, my, my knee, my left knee would get, would get banged by, by the shaft. And I felt that if, if, if I could just offset it a little bit, and that's all I did was I just offset it, this, the stick by that much so that my hand was here, here, instead of here, the, uh, the shaft of the stick would be just a little bit higher and that worked. But I found that in a course of a follow through, you now have a, a mechanical advantage lever up here by allowing yourself to twist the stick from the shaft side, usually the, the upper hand of your, your hand just goes along for the ride. But if you can add a torque to the, the blade, then you can get the, the puck to spin off like a howitzer. Just, just, and, it just, and it just jumps off the stick. So it worked for me, um, but it's, uh, it, it really is only effective for players who use short sticks. Now, how did you experiment before you had, you know, uh, you know, a working model? What type of prototypes were you experimenting with to, well, get I, to work for yourself? I took a typical wood stick, okay, let's say it was this high, and I just cut off a wedge like that, and I just flipped that wedge over to here, so that you have basically the same, the same uh, configuration here as as you have with uh, with this except that it wasn't rigid. It was held together by wood screws and it was fragile and it wouldn't work that, that way. So I, de I decided that the best way to do it would, would be to have a socket, which was uh, dimensionally designed to fit the typical wood hockey sticks of the day and even the aluminum hockey sticks of the day, which every one of them was supplied with a wood plug so that you could either wrap tape around it or, or whatever and you'd still have a place for the removable uh, hockey stick handle, angular hockey stick handle, to f to fit on there um, securely. See, because I mean it's 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 on there tight and everything, and that seemed to be the, the the engineering solution to that problem. And when did you decide that this could be a commercial idea, something that you could do and in, go into business? Well, at the time I was working in Washington D.C. in the early '80s, and I had a couple of my friends go visit the patent office itself. And we went down and looked for things in the toys and games department. And we found all kinds of things. I mean, we spent at least four or five days through our lunch breaks going through the stacks in the, uh, in, in the US uh, Patent and Trademark Office. And we saw all kinds of crazy things. Uh, the one that most closely looked like what I had uh, was on a hammer. But that was a, 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 a handle that was designed right into the, the construction of the handle, not a removably applicable handle. Uh, and also, there was a golf club, a, a putter, that had a, a kind of a joint right here that would allow this thing to swing out like that swing. So it wasn't, it wasn't rigid. It, it, was, it was 
not even similar, uh, except for the fact that, you know, golfers try every stupid little thing. And with this little um, hinge right here, it allows somebody to, to putt uh, without ever moving your hand from the side of your, of your body. Uh, again, not really what, we're, what I was going for here. And consequently, in 1980, I think it was 1989, my patent application uh, that I put in uh, was approved. And then it was uh, duplicated. I sent a duplicate copy to Canada, and that was also approved. Okay, so now you have the idea. How do you go about finding uh, a way to produce it? And the materials and looking for it and finding, uh, is it a manufacturer? Did you, did mm -hmm. you own the, the the building yourself? How did you go about that? No, I, I, I uh, back in those days, there wasn't an internet. So I went to the library and I did a little research on who actually does injection molding. Injection molding, in my opinion, was, was probably the best way to come up with a new device like this. And I, I made an appointment with, with, with the man, his name was Mr. Wilkes. He, he uh, owned Wilkes Precision Instrument uh, uh, Corporation up in, uh, I think it was in Rockville. Anyway, I visited his factory and he, um, I told him what I wanted. I gave him the, the, the designs, uh, the drawings, and the first one, the first mold that he came up with uh, I had a mistake on it. It had it had the wrong angle. It was off by about uh, it must have been 15 or 20 degrees, but it, it, it basically made the thing almost like this, okay, almost at a, at a 90 degree, and it, it was it was horrible. So we had to scrap that. It cost me a few thousand dollars, but we had to get it right because we had to get it right from the start. And uh, after that, uh, he 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 went back to the drawing board. He gave me another one uh, for same amount of money, but nevertheless. After a few weeks, um, the new mold was done, and I asked him what would it cost to do a to do a run of about a thousand, and we came up with a good price. And he made a thousand units. Uh, it may have been five thousand. I really can't remember. It's been such a long time. But um, and from then, I uh, I got my own packaging and uh, went from there. So talk about how you uh, now have a product and how you try to market it and try to sell it. Uh, actually, before you get into that, talk about the, uh, the cost in finding this guy and setting it up and, and um, the decision to actually go forward. Yes, I'm going to take the risk and go forward. Well, I got a couple of backers. What, what I did was I basically sold about 48% of the company to my two backers, um, for whom I'm forever grateful because they helped me get get to the end of my dream um, nevertheless um, those those backers extended me about five thousand dollars in credit and that basically paid for uh, most of, of, of the, the two machines uh, the, the injection moldings which were three pieces um, of really heavy steel um, that they put into a, a special injection molding uh, uh, device. Um, so anyway, I did it with, with some investors um, who, um, um, I guess they forgot about it because, <laughs> um, th and they followed me all along the way. They followed me all along the way trying to, trying, to, trying to market it, trying to sell it, trying to convince people to use it. And then when you, when you did get into the marketing, what type of marketing uh, did you do? I advertised weekly for three years in the hockey news, um, just with a, a single, it must have been a sixteenth of a page ad, and that's where essentially I got all of my sales. And um, how about uh, the, the logo and things like that? Well, the logo is a simple, um, uh, 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 what shall I say, it's a um, it harkens back to the actual design. Okay, so we just asked um, about the logo. How'd you go about some of the marketing and pick out a logo and uh, design your ads? Right, okay. Um, well, I set my own ad, set, set the own type, my own type by um, going to a graphic store and getting peel and stick them uh, letters. Uh, again, this is before computers, uh, personal computers. 
uh, anyway, I made I made uh, a uh, a white background with black lettering that had all the the details, gift grip, safe palm, uh, glove palms. Uh, made my my pitch uh, in in a, in a print ad uh, with a post office box and a send your money orders and checks to gift grip limited in College Park, uh, Maryland, and um, sent that off to uh, the Hockey News, and they ran it, as I said, for for two years, th t three years, right? I'm sorry. They, they ran it for three years, and um, that's where I got all of my sales, essentially. And uh, the logo, you went to a graphic design company that's sort of that slanted? I did that myself. Really? Yeah. Um, it was simple enough. Um, I think it was, um, this is, this is the logo right here and this is the product. And as you can see, it kind of captures what it, what it did. And, um, I just, I was just of the belief that, uh, everything didn't have to be specialized. Um, and if you understand that you don't want to tread on somebody else's patent, or somebody else's uh, logo or uh, trademark, um, and I and I did I did searches for those too in, in the patent and trademark office, and nothing came close. So I um, I just went ahead with it. And how did you design the logo? What did you use? Did you just careful? pen and ink. Yeah, just pen and ink. Did you do any testing aside from your personal? Did, was there any other type of testing? Did you give it to any other people to try it out? I, I gave it to a lot of my hockey uh, teammates, uh, amateurs down here in America, where <laughs> it really didn't get, uh, how you would say, it, an, an industrial test. It's just a bunch of guys playing, um, uh, a bunch of kids in, in, in the Northeast uh, playing street hockey. Um, and... I, I gave one or two to some professionals down here. For example, uh, Brian Erickson was a, was a right wing for the Washington Capitals uh, who was uh, rehabbing a broken thumb. And I saw him, I spotted him in the, uh, in the stands one time during a game where he wasn't, he wasn't playing. And he was sitting there with his wife and their new, newborn child and um, who incidentally was born the same day you were. Anyway, I gave one to Brian and hopefully he would uh, he would it would it would help him in either his rehab that could be another uh, selling point you know it would help you with rehabbing broken fingers or, or thumbs or whatever uh, but Brian also used a very large stick <laughs> so it doesn't really surprise me that that he didn't take to it uh, because after all he's a professional and professionals are very personal about their sticks did you get any other um, feedback from any other professionals or hear of any other professionals that may have used it Yes, I did. I talked to Bobby Clark. Uh, Bobby Clark was doubtful. Um, I talked to Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe uh, was dismissive. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that's just the way it was. Um, professionals, uh, I sent a box of, of, of the handles to every NHL team in, in the league at the time. There must have been 24 or 28 teams in the league. Uh, half of the half of the cities in Canada uh, sent them back because they didn't clear customs, but for, for a few of the cities they did. Uh, what they did do with them, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't hear anything back from them, and um, it is what it is. Do you know of any player that actually used it? I have heard through the grapevine that there are players who used it. Um, one, one of my uh, friends who's a referee, a nice hockey referee who officiated in the National Hockey League. Uh, actually told me that he saw uh, uh, one player or two players uh, in, a, in, a, in a preseason game trying them out. So, uh, and I think uh, the one player that he told me about actually used it in, in some NHL games. Um, and that's the last I heard of it. Who was the player? I don't know. Uh, how did you sell them? In bulk, or did you sell them one at a time? Any way I could, but mostly two or three at a time. I'd sell them for like two, two for ten dollars, or seven ninety nine each, or something like that. I can't remember the actual price. 
Uh, and um, I can't remember, but I think there were a couple of places. Um, uh, Can- Can- Canadian Tire, uh, uh, they, they bought a bunch. They bought a bunch. And I can't remember how many there were, but um, um, it was introduced up in Canada. And it was um, also um, patented in Canada. So um, it, 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 it had a fair, a fair um, uh, distribution and, and ex, ex, exposure. But again, what I didn't make clear and what I think, this really is a vertical market in a vertical market. You know, uh, once players get, get wedded to their long stick where they can take a good hard slap shot, um, th- that's, the, that's the game, that's the stick that they build their game around. And I was kind of opposite. I was like, I don't think a slap shot is that big a part in the game. Um, and only players who use short sticks, I think, would be the ones who would benefit the most. And you really don't lose much on the slap shot by having a sh- that, that much a shorter stick. How successful was it? Were you able to get your money back? Yeah. Yeah, I was able to get um, all of my investment back. Um, and some, even from my other investors who were in it, and they, they, they knew that they could lose it all, but it wasn't really that much money. Um, I received a total, like I said, about $5,000 in total from those two investors. Um, but they do have my undying gratitude. <laughs> do you still sell them at all today? I don't. No, no. I, I ran out of my, um, my, uh, my run. I could make them at the, at the, you know, at, at, at the drop of a phone call. You know, all I have to do is call, call up the that the company again and have them run up run off another 10,000 or so and and that could happen tomorrow. Gotcha, gotcha. When did the uh patent run out? Let me see. It it was approved in 1989, I believe, in 1989, so 17 years after that would be 2006 or 7, something like that. So 17 years after that. And then after your patent run out, have you seen knockoffs come on? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen knockoffs from, um, uh, I can't remember, was it the Warrior? Uh, mostly companies that make street hockey equipment. Um, to call them knockoffs, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, offend them by, by saying that what they, they made were knockoffs. True, they used uh, a fundamental aspect of my patent. They didn't do it until it expired. And at the same time, their products are different in, in, in design. Um, I, I don't think that they would have been able to survive a patent challenge back when my patent was still in, in force. Uh, but um, I'm going to give them their, 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 their due credit. Um, they waited for the most part until the, my patent expired. And now they're, they made their own. And it, I'm sure that it's not making them millions of dollars. So, it is what it is. Looking back, is there anything that you would have done differently with uh, the launch of the product and, yeah. and moving it? Yeah, looking back, there was an opportunity for me to buy the name of a company, uh, of, a, of a, a hockey stick company that went out of business at that time. It was called the Northland uh, Company, and all their sticks were named Northland. If I, if I could have bought that, uh, that, that trademark and and used that as a launching point for my own, not just a, not just the a, the a, a single device, but for my own line of, of hockey sticks. Period. Broadly, it, it might have had a better chance of, uh, of 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 surviving and and being a real real success. Yeah, Northland's a big name. How much were they asking for the uh, the name? They, I, I never I never contacted them to to to, to even broach the subject, but. It crossed my mind, and I didn't have money. I, I had sold enough of the company to my other investors uh, that I, I, you know, there wasn't much meat left on the bone for me to try to make a, a, a fair offer. Any other final things that you wanted to say about the product? Anything that you wanted uh, people to know about it? Well, I'm still using it. Some players in my league that I play in, they're they're using it. Um, in fact, one, one of the players uh, recently, he, um, he was playing against my team and he scored a goal on a, 
uh, on a on a, a loose puck that I was competing with him for, and he he scored the goal, and I I, I was kicking myself for not being able to get there soon enough and he said hey jerry look and he showed me that he was using using his stick with my handle on it and i'm like oh bob I, what's his name his name is uh uh i can't remember his name <laughs> but um he um he, he he was just just not lording it over but but saying how ironic it was that he beat me with with my own with my own stick gotcha do you still have um access to that P.O. box on the on the business no, card? No, I don't. If, if people did want to get in contact with you after watching this, would you want anyone to contact you? And if so, how would they, how would you want people to contact you? Well, they could contact me at um, uh, gibbonsgf, G-I-B-B-O-N-S-G-F at yahoo.com. That's it? Okay. If, anything else, you, unless there's any final thoughts you want to throw in there? Uh, I think a lot of teams won Stanley Cups that they shouldn't have because if everybody else was using it, the team that had the most gift grips would have won more Stanley Cups. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out the t-shirt shop for shirts like this one that pays homage to the original gift grip and other apparel sure to put a smile on any sports fanatic.